Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make at least 6 exalts per hour farming low item level logbooks, a strategy that can be done by absolutely anyone regardless of how weak or strong your character is. I've been doing this on stream for the last few days at a very inefficient pace, and despite this I still almost made enough for a second headhunter. Let's just jump right into it. So before we talk about how to set the farm up, we're going to be talking about why we're going to be doing this farm in the first place. Everyone's well aware that doing high item level logbooks yields a very large amount of money per logbook. The problem that I found with these is that they tend to take a longer amount of time and they also have a chance to brick. Even if they don't brick, you can often end up getting mods that severely reduce your damage and you can end up doing a logbook that ends up taking upwards of 20 minutes, even if you're fully maxing it and trying to run it as fast as possible. And when I started tallying out my profits per hour, I started realizing that I was actually making more money when I was running the low item level ones as opposed to the high item level ones. Once I realized that there was a lot of money to be made in running low item level logbooks fast, I started trying to optimize the strategy and came up with the MS Paint strat. I covered this in a previous video and I really recommend giving it a watch as it's the only way you're going to be able to pump out as many of these as possible in an hour. I've also plotted out uh, some data in this spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet's gonna be in the description of the video below and it's going to contain all my data, it's going to contain a handy calculator and all the other information that's gonna be covered in the rest of this video. But I'm just gonna show you what's relevant to what I wanted to explain right now and that is how much money you can expect to make per hour given how well optimized this particular strategy is so if you're paying 25c per logbook and you're only running eight logbooks per hour you're getting only 4.9 exalts an hour now this is definitely on the low end of the strat and whilst it sounds like it's good money the thing is you can easily get higher amounts so earlier today i farmed 13 logbooks and that is on a totem character that means if you're playing a raider or something really fast you could possibly even push out 14 or 15. as you can see in this table here if you're buying your logbooks at 15c each and you're pushing out 13 logbooks an hour you're making 9.3 exalts per hour on average and that is a hell of a lot of money So first things first, let's discuss how to actually acquire the logbooks. The easiest thing is through this trade site link. I'm going to be putting it in the description of the video as well. Basically, you set the item category to any expedition logbook. You set the factions to Black Scythe, Mercenaries, or Knights of the Sun. Since these are the only ones you want to run, a lot of the money that you make comes from artifact currencies, and you really can't afford to be running the Druids of the Broken Circle or Order of the Chalice. They are the currencies for Rog and Gwenin, and they cost far too little money to really be worth your time. I set the item level between 68 and 73. You could set it higher if you're really confident in your build, but the thing is, we're trying to do these as fast as possible, and if you start setting it to, you know, say, item level 75, although you could easily do the map, it may start taking, you know, seven or eight minutes, and it's hard to say whether the increased amounts of profit are worth the increased amounts of time it's going to take. I set the maximum um, uh, the maximum amount of chaos orbs we're going to pay here to 25. You can go even higher if you really want, but I was running this live search all today and all yesterday, and I was getting a decent amount of hits. I would probably estimate upwards of 200 hits per hour doing this. So next we're going to talk about my area tier list. It's really important when you're buying the logbooks to consider what areas the Scythe and Sun uh, factions are going to be in. If they're going to be in any of the areas that are red, you may want to consider just not buying that logbook, especially if it's going to be, you know, costing 25c. If it's going to cost 15c, probably might be worth the risk. That's kind of up to you. But what I would really recommend is sticking to orange or above or even yellow or above. You're going to have a much better time. I've uh, picked the tiers based on their layouts and the, you know, quality of the rewards. Uh, so, and I'll just, I'll, I'll go through them, I'll explain how I came to these conclusions. So Cemetery, it's got really good rewards. The amount of simulacrum splinters you can get in a single map, it can, you know, go as high as like 150. Uh, I've seen it go as high as 170 in my testing personally. Catalysts aren't so great, especially when you're doing low item level ones, you tend to get, you know, the bad catalysts that aren't worth a lot of money, but that's fine because the simulacrum splinters seem to be a little overtuned in terms of how many they give versus all the other league mechanics that come from doing logbooks. So that gives it an S tier reward, and then the layout is pretty good. It's a decent sized, but it does have some obstructions, and I, I, I find obstructions are really bad. They mean that you have to pay the round inefficiently, and it reduces the overall amount of rewards that you're going to be able to get from that map. Shipwreck Reef has the greatest reward, and that is Scarabs. There are I've seen some evidence of people getting upwards of 20 scarabs in a single map. I've never personally pulled that off, but I can say that the average amount of money you're making from scarab rewards is much higher than pretty much all the other rewards, save for the simulacrum splinters. And it's got a decent layout. 
The layout is nice and compact, but again, it's got a lot of obstructions. There are a lot of situations where you can't pay the round efficiently, and that has to be taken into account. Dried Riverbed is the smallest layout, which means it's, it's the best layout. It's very, very compact. All the rewards are very close by, and it's almost impossible not to you know, find a really good way to pay the round and get all the things that you want. It's also got decent rewards. It's got Legion Splinters. That puts it in C tier, but that's not too bad. And the fact that the layout is S plus sort of uh, brings it up a lot. If you're running modifiers that give, you know, extra monster remnants, extra, uh, sorry, extra remnants, extra runic monsters, extra chests, etc. It really, really carries the rewards you're going to get from Drag Riverbed. Uh, and I guess all the others are, so are sort of self-explanatory. I won't really discuss the ones in the middle, but I will discuss the ones down here. So a lot of these basically have really, really, really terrible layouts. Sand Slums and Forest Ruins are the ones I personally dislike the most. They have basically a lot of corridors, a lot of obstructions, and then also the elevation factor. And the elevation factor is something that I think everyone is talking about in terms of how much it really bricks your rewards. Basically, you can have two areas that are sort of next to each other, but one is raised up and you're completely prevented from putting an explosive up on down. You have to go all the way around. Uh, it's basically like a big wall, and there's just so many of them on a layout that's already bad that it makes it really terrible. I always get low value when I'm doing these ones in particular. I think the Sun Slums is even worse than Forest Ruins by a little bit. And all of these ones down here also have really, uh, you know, they have bad rewards. The Sun Slums and Rotting Temple, they do have Legion Splinters, which are kind of okay, but the amount of money you make on average from Legion Splinters certainly doesn't make up for how bad the layouts are and how much money you're going to, you know, potentially lose. So I would really, really, really recommend skipping any of the maps that contain these layouts. Logbook modifiers are also really important, and you absolutely need to pay attention to them as some of them are worth paying more money for, and some, you know, are basically a good indication that if you can't buy the logbook for 15c, you should probably give it a miss. Um, I'm just going to explain all of them, pretty much. So, area contains Varana or Oroth basically means that you're going to be guaranteed to get a boss in there. Uh, that adds a lot of loot to the map, and you should definitely pay 25c or even more for it uh, if you have to. Increased number of explosives simply means that you're going to get more loot. The reason I've placed it so high above the others is because by having access to more explosives, you can actually plan out a more optimal path and you can, you know, go out of your way to pick up more of the modifiers early on in the route and then do an inefficient route that loops back to a, you know, a pool of rewards, some section of the map where lots of reward chests are or lots of runic monsters are. And basically, have the only way to really accomplish this in a lot of cases is by having this mod on there. Otherwise, you have to sort of give up a lot of good modifiers in order to, you know, get a path that's still decent. Increased explosive range is kind of almost as good as number of explosives. It, you know, helps a lot in terms of doing an inefficient path to then pick up, you know, good rewards at the end and plan, plan out so that you're getting all the good modifiers early and then the rewards at the end. Uh, this is pretty much the only modifier that allows you to go from one end of the map to the other without really losing too much of the, uh, of the loot in the middle. Remnants have a chance for an additional suffix modifier. So some people have pointed out that this is, you know, effectively as good as increased number of remnants. The reason I put this in the green tier and not the yellow tier with remnants is because this has the same amount of potential in terms of loot, but it doesn't have any other downsides. So increased number of remnants does mean there are going to be extra, you know, remnant modifiers but that also means that that's going to come with the remnant prefixes which are basically punishments you know they make the map more difficult being able to get two suffixes for the price of one prefix is always going to be much better than just having more remnants uh excavated chests have a five to twenty percent chance to contain twice as many items this is a really great one i have even considered it considered potentially putting it in the blue tier i just haven't gotten it enough to really have a strong feeling on it either way it's got a lower weighting than all the other ones, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the yellow tier, I guess, is pretty self-explanatory. Increased quantity of artifacts dropped by monsters would definitely be blue tier if it counted for chests as well. However, since it only counts for monsters, it's sort of limited in how good it can be. Airy contains additional chest markers. This is pretty good uh, in terms of making sure that the, whatever uh, path you plan out is going to have more rewards on it. But, you know, it's very limited in terms of how good it can be, especially when you're doing larger layout maps. I'd say this is probably blue tier if you're doing dried riverbed since it's, you know, so compact. All the extra chest markers that you're getting are, you know, going to be easy to pick up. Area contains 10% increased number of remnants, you know, self-explanatory, just more modifiers on the map so you can pick out some good ones along the route you're going. 
area contains 10 to 40 percent increased number of runic monster markers runic monsters drop artifacts and you know that's a lot of the reason why we're here for so that's really good and then of course increased explosive radius it just means that you can potentially get a few extra rewards uh, wherever you place your thing it's not that big of a deal it's nice to have but you know i definitely wouldn't be picking one area over another just because of this area contains an additional underground area uh, this is overrated by a lot of people because the underground area could spawn anywhere on the map and it's <laughs> in a lot of cases it's likely to just spawn in you know some spot that's kind of out of the way Underground areas are good, but at the cost of, you know, some of these modifiers, which are giving a lot more loot, I kind of doubt it. And then finally, the least important one is area contains increased number of monster markers. This is just by far the weakest modifier, and, you know, it's worth absolutely nothing. Every remnant has a suffix and a prefix. The prefixes are penalties and the suffixes are bonuses. And you definitely need to plan your route out in order to pick up as many good remnant suffixes as possible so the good ones are the ones that drop uh, scarabs although this i believe only appears in shipwrecked reef the ones that drop simulacrum splinters which only appears in cemetery and then 50 percent increased quantity of artifacts dropped by monsters or found in chests this is just a really 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 nice one it adds a lot of extra money to your map and you should you know pick it up whenever possible and then i guess the rest of the tier list is kind of self-explanatory you may be wondering why we put currency shards, catalysts, and oils down here, for example. The thing is that the oil drops tend to always be low tier, especially when you're running low tier uh, logbooks. You're usually getting oils that are completely and utterly worthless. Currency shards, I haven't really seen many good outcomes from that, although you do occasionally get an exalt shard. I'm just not sure whether I receive the exalt shard often enough for me to place it higher up, but this is certainly something you should keep your eye on, and if you feel that you know it's worth it for you definitely get it i wouldn't say my pool of data is large enough i've only done you know i think in total about 70 logbooks now so you know it's entirely possible i just had a streak of good, good luck and it didn't appear to be good to me but you know it could definitely be good catalyst uh is pretty much the same deal because we're doing low tier maps and the catalyst we pick up aren't really worth very much money and you know of course anything that's not on this list is just worth avoiding all the suffixes are incurring penalties, so if they're not giving you anything on here, you may as well just completely avoid them. And I would even go as far as saying, you know, avoid the orange tier remnants unless you absolutely have to. Like they're all, if they're in, if they're along the path that you already want to go, you can pick them up so long as the prefix that they're adding isn't going to make your maps, you know, much slower or it's not going to brick you in any way. Then I would get the oils or the essences, but otherwise just you know ignore them as well. So this is basically a list of stuff to avoid. Uh, before we go through it, I'm actually going to point out that there is one prefix that says runic monsters are duplicated. This is actually good because it means more money in the in the whole map. Uh, it's the only prefix that is worth picking up, and if you can if you find it, you should definitely go for it. It's better than pretty much all the suffix modifiers. In fact, it's like the best thing to find in your map, so you should always go out of your way to get it if you can. Um, as, as for the rest of this list. So the only ones you really have to pay attention to are the immunity ones. They can pretty much completely brick your map. Now, I say uh, pretty much, and that's because if it's going to make monsters immune to the damage type you do primarily, you, you can't just swap out your gear or gems and do a smaller amount of some other damage type. If you're close to, say, Avatar of Fire, if your build normally does cold damage, for example, and you're close to Avatar of Fire, maybe you want to pick up Avatar of Fire on the tree, uh, for a few regret points and then you'll be doing a lower amount of fire damage and that will at least allow you to complete the map and you'll you'll know for next time it definitely slows you down a hell of a lot it's always bad to have but it is what it is don't don't take this if it can be avoided it's going to show up in your text when you hover over your list of modifiers so it's easy to pick up as long as you're checking for it but if you do get it you are going to be losing a lot of um, chaos per hour monsters don't gr grant fast charges this is only really a problem if you get it early on because then it means you have no flasks for the entire map and that means that all the other all the other modifiers are going to be more dangerous because a lot of mods a lot of mobs are in, inflicting bleeds poisons that sort of thing not really a problem when you have flask charges but if you're going the entire map without flask charges well suddenly all those big bleeds and poisons are going to become a problem and even though you're dealing with level 70 mobs you're potentially going to die quite a few times other than that 
Runic monsters regen 30% life over one second. This isn't a problem unless you're spawning a boss. And even then, if you build strong enough and you can just nuke the boss down, this also isn't a problem. Otherwise, you might need to pick up Frost Bomb and other things to deal with it. Monsters have 50% chance to block attack or spell damage and a 5% to uh, increase the maximum block chance. So monsters have a 75% base block chance, but if you start stacking this up, you can end up with monsters blocking 95% of your hits, which means only one out of every 20 hits are going to get through. This is more devastating the more you stack it up, so you should definitely avoid it, right? You, you basically go from... Having one of these gives you uh, gives monsters 50% chance to block. Having a second gives them 85%, and then having a third gives them 90. And then you could even go up to 95, I believe, so. You just really don't want to. It, it, it's devastating. It's going to slow you right down. It's going to make your logbook take 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, it's okay to get it right at the end, but getting, getting more than one of these is just completely, completely devastating to your Chaos Per Hour. Monsters gain 50% fizz as extra Chaos. This kind of problem if you get it on a boss and you don't have any uh, Chaos Res, like I do. Um, and it can also stack up, so you can end up in a situation where Varana is dealing 150% Fizz's extra Chaos. This is really bad, you're going to die a lot, and you know, it could, could brick your map. It's probably not going to brick your map, but it could. Something to watch out for and avoid if the, you know, if the Remnant suffix isn't really worth it. Now that all said, with all these, it, just because they're on this list, it doesn't mean you should avo avoid it outright. You should just be mindful of how soon you're picking it up. You may want to plan around this. You know, like if there's a really good modifier that you're planning on getting earlier on, but you can loop around and get it later on instead because it has, you know, monsters don't grant, grant fast charges. That's something you should take in mind. Now, everything else is in green. Now, the reason why this is the case is because whilst everything else will slow you down, the bottom line is you're not going to be ever be in a position where, you know, you have a remnant prefix that says monsters take 30% reduced damage and it's got a really good suffix and you decide not to take it just because of that. Unfortunately, some of these things will slow you down, but you have to take the things that are giving you the extra rewards in the map. So that's just that. And there's nothing you can really do about it. You just got to take it on the chin when it happens. The marker tier list is basically a list of everything you should be looking for when you're actually planning your route out. Now, again, you should go look at the MS Paint strat and sort of see how I do it, and you'll see that I am pretty much following this list more or less. Uh, not that I was looking at the list, but rather I had this sort of information committed to memory, and you'll figure it out pretty soon as you go along and you observe the rewards that come out of things. So the entrances to the caverns or like underground areas, uh, always, you know, the thing you should go out of your way for. Uh, they can have up to like six reward boxes uh, underneath, which makes them very, very high value. Although obviously you don't want to kill the entire logbook by, you know, going way out and spending, you know, five paving to a, an underground entrance and five paving back. But if there's an area that has an underground entrance, you should almost always try to find some excuse to, you know, loop up around that area so that you can get to the underground part. Uh, next up is artifacts, currencies, runic monsters, and heist. So I think a lot of that's self-explanatory. Runic monsters give artifacts, the artifact chests give artifacts, and currency gives, you know, quite a lot of currency, you know, multiple chaos orbs usually. Uh, it's very high value chest, generally. The reason the highest one is here, it, it's probably not what people would have expected, but the bottom line is you usually get two to three C worth of rogue markers, you get one to two um, contracts, and then you also get a blueprint, I think, every single heist chest. There have been some logbooks where I make over 30 C just from getting, you know, like two unusual gems uh, heist boxes, which is really quite strange because you wouldn't expect this to be, you know, a really rewarding uh, box. And I still sometimes forget to take them because I'm not used to, you know, something with a heist reward being, you know, good, but they're definitely very, very high value and you should get them whenever you can. Uh, Legion, Metamorph, and Delhi are next up, and a lot of why they're not higher up is basically just because they give lower quantities of the things that they drop. Fossils, Harbinger, Currencies, uh, Ritual, and then Fragments, again, you know, self-explanatory. They're usually giving the low tier rewards and at small quantities, so they, you know, they're not very high value. Breach, Essence, and Div Cards are sort of things that you pick up while you're in the area, but I wouldn't go way out of my way for these or anything like that. They're not it's not worth compromising better loot elsewhere for these ones. And div cards especially. Uh, most of the div cards I've gotten from the, uh, the div card rewards are terrible. I think the best thing I got in like 70 logbooks was one Saint's Treasure and two Hoarders. So I, I can't think of any other div card I got that was remotely worth any money other than that. And I picked up quite a lot of these boxes over the 70 or so logbooks that I've done. 
And then everything else is pretty much just giving useless rewards that aren't even worth the time to sell. So you should definitely just avoid them if you can. I mean, don't don't avoid them if they're in the way of something or, you know, like, they're not, it's not negative. It, you're not losing anything by getting these. But I certainly wouldn't be giving up a single ex explosive judge to, you know, pick these up if they were in any way out of my way. So just wanted to wrap things up by sort of showing you, you guys my data. Obviously, this is something that it's probably better you go through in your own time if it's something that interests you. Um, the data isn't perfect, for sure. There are some circle and chalices in here before I really decided that we have to stick to Scythe and Sun. The high item level ones I have you know, basically taken out of the data. So as you can see, we totaled 42 exalts, roughly, or actually a little more. But then the total I use here is 28 exalts, roughly, and that's because I was taking out all the high item level ones. Uh, some had bosses in them, so it kind of is what it is. The reason I'm not too fussed about some of these being circle and chalice, chalices and then having lower amounts of profit is because when I wrote down the prices for the artifact currency that was before they shifted they since shifted and they've gone down a little bit not by a lot and you would probably find that the results here would even out if uh, you know i had run or only scythe or uh, sun instead of the circle and chalices and then counted the profit based on the current prices but it's not really that big a big of a deal so i'll kind of let you go through it yourself and figure out what you want to figure out and finally there is a calculator included in here now, I think the version I'm going to put in the description of the video below is read-only, so you're going to have to copy it and then, you know, basically make a copy of this to then use for yourself, but the way it works is simply that you punch in however much of each currency you want, and it's going to total it up down here and tell you how many Chaos Orbs uh, you've made in terms of these currencies. And this is the amount of currencies I have left after doing an experiment with Tujin. So as you can see, I'm sitting on close to about what's this about 23 exalts worth of artifact currency i've only included them for black scythe or knights of the sun because you really shouldn't be running the other ones uh so yeah i hope you guys found that helpful i'm going to be wrapping up the rest of these logbooks on stream tonight so that we can move on to other things i had a lot of fun doing logbooks the last couple of days i think this is perhaps the most fun i've ever had with a league mechanic and I would go as far as saying this is the greatest League mechanic they've ever put into the game. I mean, the version of it that's in maps isn't very spectacular, I kind of don't like running it, but the out of maps version, the logbook version of this League mechanic is truly superb. I give it a 10 out of 10. I don't think they could have done a better job with a League mechanic. It is just so multifaceted, it doesn't feel too dimensional at all, there are so many things that go into how you derive profit from this mechanic, everything from figuring out the correct faction to farm, the logbook modifiers, the remnant modifiers, the, you know, figuring out which way to go around the logbook in order to get, you know, the most amount of rewards. It is insanely well thought out and fun. It's the only redeeming thing in this whole patch, and I absolutely loved it. But um, it's time to move, move on to greener pastures, I think. I'm going to have a Tujin haggling video coming out tomorrow. I just didn't have time to finish the video off today, so unfortunately it's going to have to wait. But I did do about 90 minutes worth of actual haggling today, made a decent amount of money, and I certainly made more than what you should be allowed to make. You know, pretty much just AFKing in your hideout, not doing anything, just fiddling around with a menu and some sliders. But uh, anyway, that'll have to wait. i got to wrap things up for now. So uh, have a good one, guys. I hope you found this very helpful. Uh, give me a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. If not, you know the usual. Just... Uh, Write nasty comments in the comment section below and I will read them and tell you how I banged your mom.